What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to talk about class two restoration as well as a little bit about my favorite layering technique. So class two restorations are definitely a staple in dentistry. In fact, I would argue that most of you out there do this procedure every single day. And in my experience, establishing a tight but flossable contact can do wonders for our patients. Now, contacts that are open are incredibly uncomfortable. Patients have to deal with constantly cleaning the food that gets wedged in between their teeth and they're more likely to develop a cavity. So what can we do as dentists to achieve a more predictable outcome in our class two restorations? Well, let's start with what materials are available to us. I personally have had experience with both the Toffelmeyer and the sectional matrix system and to be honest, they both have their place in dentistry. Now, the Toffelmeyer is probably one of the most commonly used tools in dentistry. It wraps around the entire tooth and gives us a relatively easy way to fix a broken tooth. However, it does have its complications. The thickness of the band can prevent dentists from establishing a tight contact, which is why we typically use it with a wooden wedge or a garrison ring uh, to create a slight separation between the teeth and compensate for the relative thickness of the Toffelmeyer. Now, what a lot of you may not know is that they have Toffelmeyers that are thin. These ultra thin Toffelmeyers are what I use if I choose to use this system over the sectional matrix system. The thinness of the band helps me create a very tight contact and it adapts incredibly well to the gingival margin of the tooth. However, because it does tend to flare out, it doesn't adapt well to the buccal and lingual proximal walls, which makes it harder when I'm finishing my restoration after light curing the composite. So what about the sectional matrix system? A lot of brands have come out with this system to restore teeth. And it really is incredible because it solves a lot of the adaptation and contact problems that the Toffelmeyer gave us. Let me show you what I mean. Here I tried to mimic a cavity preparation that you might see in practice. The cavity extends well beyond the buccal proximal line angle, which makes it difficult to achieve proximal adaptation. The first step is to place the sectional matrix in with an anatomical wedge. Check it out. As you can see, we have incredible adaptation along the gingival margin. This is important because if you don't have great adaptation, then you have to deal with cleaning the flash towards the end of the appointment. And as many of you know, this can be a very difficult and annoying process. So make sure the sectional matrix is as adapted as can be. And if you're not getting that adaptation, there are solutions. Uh, try a larger wedge, or you may have to take that sectional matrix out and put a different sectional matrix in. So make sure you get it right because it's gonna save you a lot of time and the filling will look a lot better if you really work on perfecting this step. Now, for those of you out there using a Toffelmeyer for this type of cavity preparation, uh, you're gonna have some problems with the box collapsing if you place a wooden wedge or garrison ring too early. So what do you do? Well, you need to phase it in steps. The first thing I would do is place a small increment, like one millimeter or two millimeter increment of composite resin towards the box of uh, the filling, cure it, and then you can place a wedge or you can place a garrison ring on top of that because the composite will serve to prevent the Toffelmeyer from collapsing. I didn't really show this in a video clip, uh, if you guys want to see this, let me know in the comment section down below. It's actually not as hard as you think and that type of technique is really helpful for these large class two uh, restorations. Okay, back to the sectional matrix. Notice how the ring creates a slight separation between the teeth to compensate for the thickness of the matrix. I always, always, always burnish the band with a small condenser or with a flat-ended instrument to make sure that I'm getting the best contact possible. Sometimes, even before putting my setup on, I'll re-contour the adjacent tooth with a flame-shaped diamond 
to make sure I have the contours where I need it so that I can achieve a tight contact. So I really believe in that because I don't want my patients to get food getting caught in between their teeth and possibly have the formation of a new cavity sometime down the lifespan of that tooth. The next steps I'm gonna show are different for everyone watching, but this is how I layer my composite fillings. I start by etching and bonding the tooth. I use a Clearfill SE bonding system, which is an incredible product in my hands, but there are plenty of awesome bonding systems out there to choose from. It's really important to thin the bonding layer out so you don't have a thickness between the natural tooth and the composite resin. So I always use a little bit of air to thin out the bonding agent, and my assistant uses a high back to take out uh, any of the excess. After I use a tiny amount a flowable composite along the gingival floor to achieve really nice adaptation at the bottom of the box. I cure that and then I do something called the centripetal layering technique. Now the idea is to establish the marginal ridge first and transform your relatively difficult class 2 preparation into a class 1 preparation. So let me show you how this works. I place a small amount of composite resin into the box and then I condense gingivally with a small condenser, and then I push proximally into the contact point to fabricate the marginal ridge. This combination helps me slowly develop the contour of the tooth. After getting the height of the marginal ridge to that of the adjacent tooth, I use a flat-ended instrument to blend. Sometimes I'll even take an explorer to push the composite to where I need it to go. I take my time with this step, you know, I really do. An extra minute or two perfecting this moment goes a long way when you're finishing and making everything work towards the end of the procedure. You're not gonna have to do a lot of occlusal reduction to make that occlusion work because it's gonna be almost perfect already. So take your time, blend the composite with the natural tooth, and I think you'll be really happy with the result. After you cure this layer, you can start incrementally packing the composite whichever way you want, um, or you can take the entire ring system off and then pack. Uh, if you do decide to take the ring system off, you will have more working room. However, if the patient has irritated gums, then their gums may start to bleed, and that can possibly interfere with the filling. So plan accordingly. Now, I want to mention some details about how I finish my composite filling. I personally like to layer in small oblique layers to keep my C factor as low as possible and I cure you know, accordingly, and then I try to leave about one half to one millimeter for my final composite resin layer. So I place that last layer of composite in and then blend everything with typically a round-ended instrument. Uh, I also use a micro brush with wetting resin to blend the composite to the natural tooth. Um, this creates a relatively seamless junction between the natural tooth and the filling, and you'll be surprised at how nice the occlusion works out when you use this technique. So it is kind of hard to show this on a Typodon, all of these steps, so I wanna show this procedure on a live patient. Uh, I have a video I made a while back, and I wanna give some commentary on top of that video, and this will give you a more a global perspective about how I do things. Okay, so this video is sped up a little bit. We have two class two restorations back to back. I'm using a selective etching technique, okay? We're washing it, we're drying it, and I typically like to check with the mirror to make sure all the etching's removed, and it is. And we proceed with our uh, bonding technique. I use a clear fill SE. We cure it a couple times. Place our uh, flowable uh, composite resin in there and make sure we get all the air bubbles out with an explorer. I might be skipping a few steps here, but it looks like I'm doing the marginal ridge, the centripetal layering technique, blending with an explorer, okay? And it's a relatively small preparation. So we're gonna go ahead and cure that a couple times. And then we're gonna place our composite resin. Remember, we try to do one to two millimeter increments. If there's any excess, you can remove it with the, uh, with the condenser. And I'm leaving a one millimeter increment for the final layer, okay? Because I want to blend everything so it looks really nice and everything uh, is blended smooth at the end. 
I'm taking the uh, large end of a condenser, blending together, and then I'm probably gonna take the round end, which I am right here, and blending, uh, once again, everything together. Okay, now as you can imagine, there's gonna be excess composite. So yeah, so we're taking the flat-ended instrument, removing the excess composite, curing everything together, and then it looks to be, yep, we're taking the entire system off, okay? Now I do like to fine tune and polish with a fine diamond after I do that. As you can see here, the contours are nice, but I want it a little bit more rounded. So I'm taking a red, uh, a red shaped uh, disc and just rounding it out. Now here we have the ring for the second class two restoration. Uh, I, I believe I skipped through some steps here. So you're just gonna see me pack it in, do the same things we did last time. At the end, we uh, make sure we scale everything, remove any excess bonding, and we have a really nice contact. All right, so this was definitely a longer video about class two restorations and some complications that we need to think about when restoring teeth. I hope you guys enjoyed the content, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. I love doing videos like this, and if you guys have any other ideas for videos in the future, please let me know and enjoy your weekend. I'll see you for the next one.